I know it's kind of early, everybody, but we had to go early today. It's my fault. Uh, but, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend. You guys are probably sleeping. But uh, this video is super important. Like, maybe one of the most important videos I've done. And by the way, I think we just passed a 1,000 videos last night, which is ridiculous. But uh, this video is super important, and I have a special guest today. Look, all you people... Everyone that watches my channel buys comics, okay? So how many of you have got a comic in the mail and it was in a bubble mailer and there was no, nothing else and destroyed? Or how many of you are guilty of cutting squares out of cardboard? And I mean, although that's okay, uh, and that's probably the best way you could do it is cut squares uh, besides this way. This is the only way that you guys should be shipping comics. Whether you're, I would think probably the most people that ship comics are eBay or sellers. And then it goes to comic book stores. I don't know. It's kind of up in there. They're probably the same thing. And then it goes to Facebook auctions, which are probably eBay airs and comic book stores too. And then we're like the last line here, at YouTube, because there's auctions on here too. But all you people out there, need to learn how to ship comics in the right type of packaging. And to me, there is no better way than to use a Gemini mailer, comic book mailer. I've been with Gemini. They're one of the first companies I've went after um, because of the importance of having your comic book come to you safely. Um, there's a lot of options, a lot of things we're going to talk about. Won't be a super long video, but I'm super excited to bring Brian Kelly owner of Gemini Comic Supply, to you. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and let's talk to him. What's up, man? Good morning, <laughs> I hope, everyone. I hope that was a decent intro, because I it makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, that was pretty intense. I never really thought of myself as a as an advocate for the uh, correct way to ship comic books, but I'm, I'm kind of liking it. Well, wow, that's amazing to even know. Uh, you know, you can see behind me, I had an auction last night. So if you, you like right here, just for an example, uh, first thing about your mailers is they fit in the legal size envelopes. That was, that was like the number one priority when uh, I, I started to make them is I wanted them to fit in that envelope because at the time it was a relatively new program, the flat rate program. And, um, I, you know, the rates are fantastic, especially at the time they were like four or five bucks. But it's and the legal flat rate envelope that they fit in. Yeah, yeah, and, and periodically we get you know inquiries, people contacting us saying it doesn't fit. I'm like, yeah, get the legal ones, you got to order that, them online. That's the one thing. Yeah, you got to order them online, but people don't understand. It's so easy, and then they deliver a huge box of them. Just so you guys know what we're talking about here, uh, this, and I know Brian's got examples, but this is a, um, let me just do this, a Gemini mailer, okay? Uh, and, and this is what the final product looks like. There's a couple in here, okay? Just real quick, I, I because I used the, uh, I would tape it differently if uh, I was sending it just like this, but I, I've learned just to put it, spend an extra couple bucks and put it in a legal flat uh, priority envelope because it's, it's just that double secure. So it also stays on tape if you do that because you only have to tape it once. And then you put it in the mailer or the priority flat rate envelope or whatever, whatever. There's different ways to tape it, but this is it. And it's so secure. And there's other things I want to talk about, how people put them in there too, which drives me nuts. Um, but it's so simple. And it's such a, a easy investment. Uh, in my mind, you spend 100 bucks or whatever with the code. We, we've had a code forever. Economic, let me put that up. Um, you know, and you're looking at any in the area of 50 cents a uh you know with the code somewhere in that area about 50 cents each which is so much cheaper than doing you know cutting plot and, and buying bubble man and just all this other stuff this is the cheapest way you can go to ebay and look for it there it's not you go straight to the source okay gemini use the code even if you didn't have the code it would still be probably cheaper than any other way to get it Right, Brian? I'm pretty sure I've looked. 
Yeah, I, I mean, we, we sell direct to the customers. We manufacture them. So, I mean, it's it's you know, we, we try to make it price point that is, um, uh, you know, practical for for people selling comics online, whether they're you know really high end uh, key comics or you know just the kind of bulk stock that I used to sell when I had a comic shop. So uh, we'll look at the site in a minute. So a uh, couple of questions I have for you. Um, I mean, a lot of people think you're not in the country. <laughs> That's the first thing. Uh, where are you located exactly? I'm in Orange County, California. Okay. And um, when did you start the company? It feels like you've been around for quite some time. Uh, you know, I mean, there were a few iterations of it. Um, in, you know, 2011, 2012, I moved to Detroit. And that's when I actually uh, acquired a, a small online comic shop. And, um, you know, I, it's such a competitive market, particularly for just a, you know, guy selling comics out of his apartment um, that I, I thought, you know, the only way I could really get a competitive advantage is if I can, you know, ship them more efficiently and more cheaply than, than the competition. And so I took, you know, another mailer that I had come across and, started calling corrugated plants in, in Michigan until I found a guy that was willing to give me the time of day. And he helped me, um, you know, just, just modify it so that it would suit my needs. And, you know, I had no intention of selling it. I just wanted something to use for myself. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just cutting up pieces of cardboard is just, you know, brain damage after a while. Oh man. Uh, before <laughs> Dem and I, I was, I would go to like Walmart at midnight on Tuesday and they have all the empty boxes and they just give them to me. And then I would, or I go buy giant boxes and cut squares and squares. I've been doing eBay. I haven't done it in a while, but I was since 2001, you know, so, you know, cutting squares was driving me nuts. And then I came across Gemini, you know, and I was just like, there's no other way that I, I won't, there's no other way. Um, it protects the book. You know, a lot of people now I'm kind of curious, Brian, how you do it. So, like, okay, as an example, okay, I'm going to fold it up. It's really easy. You just follow the rope. Then there, you can do different levels for um, for different sizes, one book, two book. Here's my question to you, okay? <laughs> do you tape that once it's like that? No, you know, and, and, and I would say the, the, the one and only complaint that I get about these is that the comic, if you have just one comic in here, it's going to slide around a little bit. Um, and that's something that I've, you know, dealt with since I, you know, before I was even selling them when I was just using them myself. So what I'll do, and, and I've got one already folded here yeah. is I'll, if I'm just sh set, uh, shipping, you know, one or two comics, I'll really crease this. Well, that's what I do too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's different, there's different levels. I know this is a simple thing. Okay. But also you're bubble wrapping your comic, right? Um, I'm not. I, you know, at, at the oh, time I wasn't. How dare you? Anything. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> well, I'll show you though what I what I what I do have. Well, to to address the issue of it sliding around, I've seen a couple different things that people will do. One is um, just a little piece of masking tape inside. If they're shipping one comic, they'll just you know just tape it with masking tape that'll come easily off the bag. Um, I used to take like just a paper towel and like wrap the comic in the paper towel and put it in there and that would keep it from sliding around. So there's ways around it, but if there's, there's a backstory to this other product, but you know, what I'll do I'll, oftentimes now, if I'm shipping one comic is we sell these too. These are just uh divider yeah. pads it's and like cutting cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and, and this isn't what these were originally made for. I, you know, at some point uh, along the way, I moved from Detroit to Raleigh and I had to move, you know, hundreds of long boxes. And so I needed like a cheap way to make box dividers. You made dividers, yeah. Yeah. So I just, I, you know, the things that are plastic out there on the market, I would have, you know, gone broke trying to get enough of those to organize my collection. So I just started to use these. I just called the same plant said can you make me a little rectangle of cardboard and i would you know left a little bit so that i could write what the uh you know what it was in my box and then when they were used up you know for higher value comics i would just sandwich board them put them inside the mailer and you, you they're a little bit taller so you lose you know kind of like one of the score Not, lines yeah but it still fits yeah but then, you know, now you've got effectively, you know, Multiple four or five layers, layers of, of this corrugated material. And I mean, it's this is about as, you know, bulletproof as you're going to get. 
Yeah, I think I think that's a great option, the little fillers. Um, but, you know, there's a couple other things. I, I, this conversation is turning into something totally different. But <laughs> I got to tell you something that I absolutely hate. And, and I'm, I'm talking to everyone that's going to watch this video. Everyone that, in my mind, everyone that thinks they're doing it right, you're not. Okay? They put the comic. Okay? And then they tape the top, the sides, the they 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 almost super glue the dang comic on there. So here's the problem. Even if you razor cut the tape, right? It's still going to have problems. If you just move I'm talking about keeping the comic without giving breaks on the comic or anything. When you tape a comic, and maybe just one tape like you said to secure it, but when you go all out and you're taping all different ways to hold it on there, it's nearly impossible not to bend that comic when you're taking it off. So don't do that. Look, it's easy to do what he said. You get the little, I mean, I don't know if Brian's agreeing with me or not, but this is from my what I'm learning. So, you know, even if you get the inserts, that's great. But I want to show you something else really fast because it's driving me crazy right now. So I'm going to show you really fast what I do. It's going to take 10 seconds. So I'm putting the thing down here. Okay, can you see it? Look, so simple. I get the book, right? Bubble wrap. You can see it, right, Brian? Yeah. I do this, right? I always bubble wrap. I It's two squares of bubble wrap, okay? You can get it at Walmart. Then I'll tape this, right? The back. It's so easy, dude. Then I get it and I put it in there, right? It's taped. And I just do this. So first of all, the box, the bubble wrap is protecting the comic from the box, just in case. Not that you need it. There you go, right? I don't do anything else. The comic does not move. Now, there are problems. Sometimes people think if this, I've seen it where this comes undone and the comic flies out or something. So if you're just shipping it like this, tape this side too, you know? But with the bubble wrap, it's even more secure. It doesn't move. And it's protected all around. I wish everyone would just do that. <laughs> I mean, you could. <laughs> That's put, a great option. I haven't yeah. seen that. It's just, it's so simple. You know, it protects the book all the way around. That's how I ship all my comics. Regardless, uh, I just wanted to show my idea. But I would say get those little extra pieces too. Be, like you were saying, the little extra pieces of squares. Because you can put one here and then you can put one on top of the comic too. But I always bubble wrap too, just because I'm a freak. But. <laughs> Regardless, I, I mean, a lot of it I think has to do with what kind of comics you're shipping. You know, I mean, all of my products were were things that I made to suit my own purposes, and and I just sold you know bulk. I I sold runs and you know lots of of uh, of you know bulk comics, and so it wasn't you know periodically I would have some higher value things that I would really want to protect, but you know for the most part I would just th throw them in there, you know, pack them up. Uh, seal them more or less the same way and um I, I mean i i shipped thousands and thousands of orders on ebay and i can remember just one time that someone complained about the um the way that the comic arrived and and most of the time I, it's shipping error anyway yeah it's yeah not, and it, exactly it was, it was something, yeah, yeah yeah that's how it always is i've never had a problem with my personal packing it's blame it on me because the postal service threw it and it landed on a corner, you know, <laughs> or, or, you know, honestly, I have a friend that works in the post office and what they, they go through these giant sorter machines and they drop all the packages drop down into multiple. So if it lands right on that corner, I mean, yeah, you're pretty much protected with the Gemini, but there's always that one chance. Yeah. That's so, going to land weird or something's going to fall down on top of it. I, I, how many comics do you say, like, let's just say silver, bronze, modern, how many would you suggest putting in a Gemini? I usually stop at about nine. Um, it, it looks, I mean, regularly I would pack as many as 12. Yeah, you um, can do that. Yeah. But, but I would say kind of the sweet spot was like nine or 10. You know, yeah. without really feeling like I was cramming them in there. And, and often what I would do when I was shipping, you know, that many is I would buy, um, you know, either like, like, like golden age bags or like the thick silver age bags and just stuff it. Well, know, all the comics okay, but in those there. bags were, were the bags, were the comics individually bagged and boarded too? 
Yeah, and then okay. and they would go in those larger bags, and that would be a pretty solid um, little brick of comics, and then I would pack them in there. Yeah, with with the two square bubble wrap method that I use, I can get I can put more than nine, but it seems with your little uh, what do you call it corrugated uh, the little lines, um, uh-huh. what you can do the two right where one no you don't bend anything except the outer ones, and you can get bubble wrapped nine in there it's like a brick and you tape all ends of the bubble wrap the other sides and it'll still fit very well in a legal flat envelope uh but you know you're pushing your luck (laughs) the more you put the harder it is to get in those envelopes sure um what's what's so great about the envelope though and i think it's brilliant that you did it to fit in those is that once you go over maybe two to three comics the weight goes over a pound and so the problem there is that once you go over a pound, you can't ship it first class at the price is cheaper to ship it priority, right? So once you get over that pound or 16 ounce mark, so you can ship it first class, like just in the box um, for five bucks in that area all over the United States. But once you get over a pound, it gives you that priority rate, which will be 10 bucks or nine to 12, depending. So you can go three pounds, four pounds, and fit it in a legal flat envelope, right? And you're looking at about eight bucks all day long. So it's brilliant that way. If you, you know, you can save on shipping by doing it that way. Once you get over like three, over a pound. Um, yeah, I think also that that uh, legal envelope, you know, where the where the seams are on it. Yeah, I mean that kind of addresses, you know, maybe some of the weaknesses on the mailer, you know, on those end parts. Now you've got this kind of arch above it, and so it, it really has a lot more uh, crush strength. So, yeah, it does, and you can always tape the mailer all or the priority envelope all you want, uh, you know, and secure it that way too. However you want, but uh, plus. It's faster. Like you're talking three days. You know, first class is not three days. And we all know, I mean, a lot of people break the rules and and ship it uh, media mail when it gets over that weight because they don't want to spend a lot of money. But a lot of people have got trouble for that. And they end up paying double or triple or max price when they get caught. Yeah. I mean, I I did it for years. And and I kind (laughs) of felt like, um, I felt like, you know, maybe the the U.S. Postal Service like backed the truck over the mailbag just to make sure you're not getting any extra value for your media mail. Yeah. Um, but I I, there, I got to a point where all of a sudden, you know, uh, customers were calling me to complain that they had to go and pay at the post office for the additional um, postage, and that that really is going to annoy your customers. So I don't advise it anymore. But um, yeah. you know, the the priority. The other thing too is it comes with uh, what is it, fifty dollars insurance? That's right. Yeah. So if you do it that way, that's right. So let's take a quick tour. I'm going to show them your site really fast. Sure. Uh, let's see. Nope. That wasn't it. Okay. So this is a Gemini Comic Supply site. So I'm going to back out of here. So this is the homepage. Okay. So it's, it's really e- – I mean, it's so simple. But it has, you know, pictures and stuff and it – Talks. Okay, here's the three options. You have the set, right? With it comes with the divider pads. So how many? Or no, no, yeah, yeah. So so this is you know I, I get people asking all the time like why do you put you know fifty divider pads with a hundred mailers or 150 mailers and you know just for the same way that I try to get a competitive advantage when I was selling comics. You know, I, I really put a lot of, you know, time and, and energy into, like, how can I ship these products the most efficiently? And so the mailers in the box create that kind of void space. And so I can stuff, you know, 50 dividers down in that slot without, you know, increasing the the dimensional rate for the for the package. So, the so that's why we we do that configuration. Um, but we've, we've played with it a little bit, too, just to make sure that we're, you know, able to kind of maintain a, a good shipping price point. Yeah. So, like, if we were going to start from the beginning, this would be it right here. The first one would be comic flash mailers, okay? This one includes the dividers. The next one is just dividers. And then you have this, which is almost, when I received some, I thought it was almost like, 
uh, an extra precautionary package like you would insert in the actual mailer but this is actually a separate mail it's a little bit smaller yeah this one um you know it, it's a different design i've got one right here um oh, hang on. this is this is a technically it's called a um packaging envelope like the type of, of box this is um and when I was in Raleigh, a lot of the local comic shops in the Southeast were ordering these from Uline. And Uline, I think, now sells them for maybe 75 or $80 per hundred of them. Yeah. Uh, but this is this is just what people were using in that area. And so they said, can you make it cheaper? And I said, well, yeah, I can make it cheaper. Like so Uline I understand you kind, of, you kind of did it so that you could have the competitive edge uh, and offer that as well as your product. Is well, and, and I think ultimately most people have converted to the flash mailers um, where this is really awesome is for shipping like magazines or oversized books that, you know, you periodically, if you're selling, you know, um, uh, c comics stuff online, you get one of those odd items and it's, it's tough to get into anything else. This is like perfect for magazines like, uh, you know, uh, Vampirella or something like that. You know, you can, yeah, you can use the other mailer too for it. I've, I've done it, but. But yeah, I, think, I, I mean the the imprint area is like like standard uh, magazine size. I so, see so the so out, the inner square, yeah. Yeah, so I mean it's it's uh, it's not as secure of a design. There's uh, some customers who just love them, and and that's all they use, and they they do something similar with the bubble wrap in the inside. Um, but you know, really, it was just kind of listening to what people were looking for, and and you know, doing something a little bit better than a uh, line could. Yeah, I'll, let me. I don't know what happened here. Um, okay, so why can't I? I think my. Okay, there you go. Okay, sorry about that. No, <laughs> I'm just trying to get back to where I was. It's like working slow. Why does it keep going to storage? Oh, shipping supplies. Come on, baby. Okay, it's working. Okay, so for instance, I'm just going to give you guys an example. If you were just going to order stuff for your shipping, okay, like if you wanted to start somewhere, the comic flash mailers, you click select options. There are, these are the mailers that we're talking about. And here's an example where like it will fit inside the flat rate. That's a pretty big size box too. That's probably got nine is that a 12 box uh, probably 12 i probably yeah. wanted to make it as big as possible yeah and so but here's the actual what it looks like it's very simple to do um but here's the deal i want to show you the difference say you wanted to order oh it looks like you changed your it looks like you changed it from two to four now you're 150 to 450 um yeah, oh, so mind. Like, I can go down. Right? Yeah, no, no, I, I gotta maybe talk about this. We, we, we had to change this just recently because, um, uh, you know, again, I'm trying to optimize the uh, uh shipping rates, sure. And, um, you know, earlier this year or, or late last year, both FedEx and UPS started to lower their uh, additionally additional handling threshold from 70 pounds to 50 pounds. Um, and so you know, that that 200 mailer box that we would typically sell was you know 63 pounds and so all of a sudden you know on average yeah. the shipping cost was 25 it like doubled and so you know rather than just upping i remember when that happened yeah so we we just we had to we had to drop the quantity down to 150 and so now we're shipping in in multiples of 150 just so that we can keep that shipping rate a little bit more you know cost effective well that's fine i mean you have options here but let's just say you get 150 okay i'm gonna it says 74.95 i'm gonna add it to my cart just an example you get 150 mailers. Okay. Is it in my car? My computer is running so slow right now. Okay, look, guys. Right here, it says a coupon code. All right? If you put economics 10, okay? And you press apply coupon. It took 10% off, okay? So let's just say I'm shipping to California, $21. So with the coupon and the shipping, it's $88.75 for $150, okay? 
So I'm just this is just an example. And shipping prices will be different depending on where you live, but not astronomically different, I don't think. No, we've because we've added distribution centers all over the country, so it's it's pretty consistent now. And and Canada. So eighty eight seventy five divided by one hundred and fifty. You're spending almost sixty cents for one. Now I know comic stores that sell these for a buck each. <laughs> so let me clear my cart. Uh, so um, yeah, guys. I, I look. All I gotta say is it's worth it. Considering the fact that if you guys are doing a, but you're going and you're buying a bubble mailer, let's say that you're going and buying a bubble mailer, and that's way more than that. That's way. How much is a bubble mailer? A couple dollars. Yeah, I mean, if you get if you get a gigantic box of bubble mailers, maybe about fifty cents a piece. Okay, but then if you just put a comic in there, it's going to get destroyed. But if you get the box, <laughs> the Gemini, it's 60 cents. You don't need anything else. You don't need anything else. Yeah, you could put it in a in a legal uh, flat rate envelope. That's fine. But, uh, you know, why waste all that money and ship to someone just to piss them off? I, I don't know how many times I've gotten the weirdest contraption of a box <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, it. And I pretty much stopped ordering completely, <laughs> you know, from other people. And when you get a Gemini in the mail, you know that person actually cared. That's all I have to say about that. I can't preach it enough. If you're not using Gemini, you're crazy and everyone hates you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I would seriously suggest checking them out. Um, there's a link in the description, too. You can always use the code. It, you, were, you, were you saying something about something special? I, I can't remember what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. No, I wanted to uh, offer a, a special coupon code for your listeners just for kind of a, a, a limited use. And uh -huh. that would be uh, uh, Economics 20. And okay. that give you 20% uh, 20 uh, 20 off of your order um, for the quantities up to 150. Um, so that'll be oh. active here shortly, um, and it'll be it'll be limited use to the you know first twenty five users. Okay, um, but but that's a, a little added bonus for your listeners. So up to up to one fifty. Now let me ask you this: there was a difference. There was there. Okay, there used to be like a limit on where you could use economics ten. Is there no limit now? On I mean, you can use it any time, but. Can they order a thousand boxes and use it? Can they order? I mean, what's is there uh, one of those tiers that they can't use it on? No, not anymore. Um, I, I removed that when I removed awesome. the, uh, the the larger quantities um, for the for the two hundred you know boxes at a time. But the the ten percent off can be used up to the seven fifty, which is the um, you know, largest quantity that we we sell on this website. Which is incredible. So what a seven fifty? Oh, I'm picking the wrong one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like a zombie. I, I, you know, I didn't tell anyone else except Brian, but I didn't sleep yet. <laughs> I had a four and a half hour auction last night. I packed. I tussled in bed. I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to do this earlier. I won't be able to make it. <laughs> so I think I'm doing good though. So seven hundred fifty mailers is three hundred bucks. So you would get thirty percent off, but you know it would be it would be uh, well it would just be the the twenty. You uh, I'm sorry, not thirty percent yeah. off. You get thirty dollars off. Uh, I meant thirty. So at ten percent, you would get thirty dollars off. That so it'd be two sixty if you went huge. Okay, um, so two sixty whatever the shipping is probably going to be more, but you know, I mean, you know what's funny is Brian. I see people buying on eBay. They'll buy your product, right? They'll buy mass quantities of it, and then they'll sell them, like by the hundreds or whatever, for like forty dollars more than you they could get if they just went to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So people will sell everything. So yeah, if you guys want, the first twenty-five people can use Econ Twenty or Economics Twenty. Um, 
and get 20% off on the 150s. And uh, yeah, but always economics 10. So um, anything else, Brian? I mean, honestly, I, I don't know. We kind of, I don't know what else there's to say. You either use it or you don't. It's, it's... Well, I did want to talk about, you know, the one product that, we get inquiries about you know oh, yes. for the uh for the for the graded comics right the slab oh, god i'm so excited yeah and, <laughs> and um you know I, I always kind of shied away from it because i never really sold graded comics myself so i didn't really have a chance to experiment and play around with them um and so i started asking some of my customers that have bigger retailers retail shops like for their input and it was so wildly different that i thought okay I, i'm gonna just kind of step back from this for a while but um you know finally like uh you know i, I started working with a, a corrugated plant um in dallas and um they've been helping me with some different designs and, and i've got kind of two finalists and i'm just kind of testing them i'm sending samples out to customers to try them out um but one of them is essentially just a larger version of the uh, flash mailer it's got to be a lot thicker right well so it's it's going to be it's, I mean, this seems like a dangerous game, but if you can pull it off, you'll be killing the market. Well, it's it's so the so this is a e flute, right? Thirty two ect e flute. I've learned more about cardboard than I ever knew there was. <laughs> um, the the one for the graded comics is going to be double layer. It's going to have one really kind of dense hard layer, like on the these mailers, and then it's going to have one thick, soft, squishy layer in the inside. Oh, um, I like that. So it's it's going to be, you know, it's going to be like this. And, you know, it's going to fold the same way, but it's going to be much more substantial in terms of the, the protection. Now, would you say you would also put that in something else or would you could ship it just like that? Well, I, it, I was. It sounds so scary. Yeah. So the other the other option and, and what I've been kind of looking at as well is to make a, a bubble envelope to go with it. A bubble, you know, this is a you know standard size five. Um, I'm gonna have some, you know, potentially custom made to fit this exactly. So, or the, you know, with the graded comics. So, not only are you getting, you know, really kind of a robust uh, corrugated material around it, you're also gonna get the bubble nailer. And and that's, you know, I, I understand with graded comics, you know, they can be astronomically valuable. So, you know, I want to make sure that I, I can double down on, on the, you know, level of protection that they're getting. The other well, alternative yeah. is something, you know, similar to this, but it has kind of built in corner protectors. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting to see some more samples of that, but it's going to be a similarly um, thick material and it's going to just, you know, just kind of encapsulate the, uh, the comic and in which case it can just go in these, the size five. So. Um, so those are kind of the two different designs that I'm, I'm working on right now, but I'm hoping, you know, within the next month we'll have, you know, something kind of nailed down and up on the website. Well, I mean, dude, I'm serious, dude. If you can pull it off, you will change the game. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind because that is something that's, it's so difficult. It's, I mean, even CGC, I mean, like I, I've gotten, you know, I, whenever I got graded them, I'd send him 25 books, right? Because I knew that was the limit for the box size that they send, which is this big square box. And if it's 25, and they figured out a way around it, multiple layers and all this stuff to send 25 slabs. But, dude, I don't know how many times I've had a cracked slab in there. But uh, maybe it's because of all the weight. But I think maybe if you're doing this, these boxes will be for one single slab. Uh, I'm looking at, like, maybe up to three, and it'll have a, a similar sort of... Um scoring configuration where you'll you'll be able to you know adjust will it be multi-layered for each one or yeah so i you know I'm, I'm i'm looking at different things i cracking is kind of a big concern so you know having just another um corrugated sheet in there i, I mean I, I kind of envision selling it as like a whole kit you know there'll be a box and there'll be different components that you can ship um you know slabs in uh, whether it's the the mailer the bubble envelope and the um, you know, corrugated piece to go in between the slabs if you're putting multiple in there. Um, but you know, I, I, I mean, still trying to keep that that price point down um, and and making it you know really cost effective. Um, but yeah, I mean, these are kind of the ideas that I'm throwing around just to you know. Yeah, man. It, it, like I, I like the idea of the like it starts to worry me once we go multiple, and I know you've got to try to figure out how to do it, but. Even the one, just one is scary. But I like the idea how you said there's going to be 
one hard layer of cardboard, and then the next layer is cardboard with like a soft, spongy, whatever, or bubbly, whatever, and then the comic, or the graded slab, and then the other way around, right? And then an additional bubble mailer to go with it. Uh, dude, I feel if that works and it's secure enough, uh, dude, I'll order a ton. Like, <laughs> I mean, I think the whole world would freak out uh, because it, it's, you know, there's that problem. You know, I ship mine super bubble wrapped in a medium flat rate box, the not the shoe box, the other one. And they fit just right in there. You can put up to three, but dude, it's a dangerous game. If you can figure it out, man, uh, you're gonna. It's gonna be m incredible. Yeah, no, that those those media uh, those medium flat rate boxes are so thin, you know. And and even when you get a lot of um, uh, bubble wrap around it inside, you know, you still have to probably put them at a little bit of an angle, like they don't fit just right. Um, well, yeah, the, know, the, is, the problem is the top and the bottom. So you, you know, you can do a couple times top and bottom, and then just go mad crazy on the side. So yeah. it's like a giant pillow, but it's thin on the top and bottom. But you're right. Like, you're right. Uh, but that's like the only real option uh, if you want to ship it quick and for a reasonable price, unless you're getting a giant box, you know. Uh, you know, that's the next step. But I really hope that works out, man. I would love to. You, if you get a sample, send it to me. I'll, I'll mess yeah, with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I definitely want to want to get some input because, you know, this is this is something that I wouldn't have been able to attest to trying thousands of times before I started selling them like the the flash mailers. It's got to be scary to even think about the, the slab box. But like, again, man, that would you would definitely change the game. I, I've never heard of anything like it. So, um, I mean, there might be options out there, but I would trust you with it. I mean. I trust Gemini. That's all I know. So, <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, good luck with that. And I, you know, I really appreciate you joining me. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. I really hope that you guys that are watching or maybe pass by this video, share this video all over the place. Not don't think about me. Don't think about Brian. Think about saving comics. That's all I, I seriously. <laughs> please i hate the way i get booked sometimes i hate it it's the struggle so thanks again brian i really appreciate it thanks everyone for joining us we went a little bit over and i know you got to go somewhere so i'm gonna leave it at that you have anything else um no but if, if anyone has any input just just uh go to the site and and submit us a uh you know uh, there's a contact form if you've got some of your own ideas about the uh slab i'd love to hear them yeah that's a great idea so send him some messages, guys. Tell him what you think. I mean, it's always good to hear from others. Get some ideas. Yeah. So sure. uh, once again, thanks so much. And uh, we'll see everybody later. I will talk to you soon, Brian. And take care of yourself. I appreciate right. it again for you stopping by. It means a lot. Thanks for having me. All right. All see right, you. Take care.